Focus groups found this video bleak, haphazard, and approximately 25 seconds too long. We begin today's show in Japan, where a new parliamentary inquiry has concluded last year's nuclear meltdown of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant could have been prevented. The investigating commission appointed by the Japanese Diet concluded, quote, it was a profoundly man-made disaster that could and should have been foreseen and prevented. Uh, the commission held the government, regulators, and a nuclear operator responsible for the triple meltdown that occurred in March 2011 after a powerful earthquake and tsunami struck the country's northeast coast. Shuya Nomura is a member of the commission investigating the nuclear accident. Man-made disaster, we are able to say that based on all the facts gathered that the cause of the accident was in fact, we believe, to be man-made. The more than 600-page report urged greater safety around nuclear plants and called on Parliament to closely monitor a new nuclear watchdog due to be launched in a few months. It also urged the government to be more transparent about its relationship with the nuclear industry. Meanwhile, last weekend, thousands marched across Japan to protest the resumption of nuclear power generation. The country halted its nuclear production earlier this year for the first time since the 1970s, but resumed on Saturday by bringing one shuttered plant back online. This is protester Akiko Kondo. While saying they're going to restart, there continue to be various problems even with OE nuclear power plant. When I hear this, and under these circumstances, to have the plant running, all I can really say is that the government and all those involved really shock me. Well, for more, we're joined by Arnie Gunderson, a former nuclear power industry executive. He's the chief engineer at Fairwinds Associates and co-author of the Greenpeace report, Lessons from Fukushima. He often provides independent testimony on nuclear and radiation issues to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and other government agencies. Uh, Arnie Gunderson, welcome to Democracy Now! Hi, thanks for having me. Well, your initial reaction to the report uh, released by the uh, Japanese parliament? Well, you know, it, we can no longer call it the Fukushima Daiichi accident. An accident is when a bolt of lightning comes out of the blue and you have no uh, idea why, what caused it. Uh, th this report hit the nail on the head. This was man-made. Um, the, the Japanese have known for at least 20 years and perhaps a lot longer that tsunamis of the size that could hit um, Fukushima Daiichi were, were in fact likely and uh, never did anything about it. Um, there's a coziness between the regulator and um, the, the people that run the nuclear power plants, uh, not just in Japan, but worldwide. Uh, this report focused on the, that relationship between um, the regulator and, um, and the power plant owners in Japan. And one of the uh, fascinating parts of the report is that it, seemed, it, it says that uh, at least one of the reactors may not actually have been damaged by the tsunami, but actually by the earthquake itself uh, that preceded the tsunami, which would at least suggest major structural flaws in the design of these reactors to withstand earthquakes. Yeah, there's actually uh, some curious information on uh, Fukushima Unit 1. That was the first one to fail. Interesting, too, that was built by an American company, General Electric, and an American architect engineer. Uh, so it, it's hard to, 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 to the Japanese to blame themselves when this was an all-American design. Um, s strange things happened before the tsunami hit on Fukushima uh, Daiichi Unit 1. Also, though, there's some bulges in Fukushima Daiichi Unit 4. And uh, those bulges are called something, uh, a first mode Euler strut bulge. And, and they're definitely seismically induced. So um, I don't think the nuclear industry wants to uh, acknowledge that their seismic codes may be faulty. But um, I think it's certainly likely, and I agree with the report. And what implications might this have for uh, other nuclear plants here in the United States, for instance, who, are, uh, who maybe have had a similar design uh, to, the, uh, to a Unit 1 in Japan? There's 23 plants in the United States that are essentially identical to all three of the, um, the Daiichi plants that, uh, um, that blew up. And uh, uh, you know, I'm of the opinion that they should all be shut down. We, 
We had a bad design back in the 70s. This design was known to be bad. There were a series of Band-Aid fixes, but, um, but it never really got to the root cause that this is just too small a containment. It's interesting, two days after the accident, Nuclear Regulatory Commission key people were discussing it, and one of them blurted out, these are the worst containments in the world. So if we know they're the worst containments in the world, why are those 23 plants still running in the United States? And where are some of those uh, 23 plants in the U.S.? Um, there's a few in the east, um, the Pilgrim, the Vermont Yankee, Oyster Creek. Uh, there's a bunch in Illinois, the, the Dresden plants right near Chicago and the uh, Quad City plants. And there's uh, also several in the southeast. Uh, so they're all essentially east of the Mississippi, but um, in near areas where there's high population densities. Uh, and the Parliament report was also uh, deeply critical of the response uh, to the disaster by the government and by uh, TEPCO, the uh, operator of the, uh, of the Daiichi uh, reactors. Could you talk about that as well? Yeah, I was on CNN three days after the accident saying that this is as bad as Chernobyl. And the Japanese never made that acknowledgement for eight weeks. And that affects emergency planning. Um, they didn't move women and children out of the high radiation areas fast enough. Um, they really didn't want to admit what uh, uh, independent observers knew was already occurring. And it's a, it's a separate catastrophe from the, the fact that they had ample warning that it could happen. And when you say it, uh, you initially warned that it, could, it was as bad as Chernobyl, what is your assessment now with all the additional information that's come out uh, as to the potential long-term impacts of what happened uh, in Japan? Um, if there's any luck here, it's that the wind was blowing offshore and about 80% of the radiation wound up in the Pacific. Um, the amount of radiation released was clearly as much as, as Chernobyl, but most of it headed out to sea. That, by the way, wouldn't be the case in, in Illinois, for instance, where these reactors are surrounded no matter which way. Um, my, my estimate is that over the next 30 years, we're going to see about a million cancers as a result of this. Um, and, of course, it could have been worse had the wind not been blowing out to sea. The, the report also was uh, criticized the, uh, the decision of the Japanese prime minister to rush to the site uh, within a day of the disaster, saying that he actually impeded and, and uh, delayed uh, the, uh, the efforts of the workers on the scene to control the disaster. Could you elaborate on that? You know, when you bring in the prime minister, uh, attention is diverted from what's really important, which is a nuclear accident. You know, Jimmy Carter did that right after Three Mile Island. He came about three days after the accident in an attempt to quell the public fears. But, but this was different. There was a, um, a, a grave disconnect between um, Tokyo Electric and the, and the prime minister's office. They didn't trust each other. And, uh, of course, the prime minister will, is taking credit, claiming that he forced Tokyo Electric not to abandon the site. And on the opposite side of the argument is that he arrived on site and, uh, and diverted attention. Um, I think it's a secondary issue to the broader issue of the fact that, you know, the regulator and the, and the, and the utilities were essentially in bed together. Also, it was quite unusual that the report uh, leveled some criticism at the culture uh, of Japan and the tendency of the public to, uh, to not question the authorities, uh, to uh, not tolerate uh, dissent, uh, and, uh, and really suggested that the uh, attitude and the culture of the Japanese public needs to change. Uh, do you consider that unusual in a report of this type? It's tough for the Japanese to admit that culturally they really respect authority. Um, and, and I would agree that the report uh, was right spot on that um, they need um, a more healthy dialogue back and forth. 
But you know, it's, it's not just Japan. When um, you know, I was a senior vice president, and, and when I was fired, I was talking to a high, a highly placed nuclear attorney in Washington, and he said, "Arnie, in this business, you're either for us or against us, and you just cross the line." So the industry, no matter if it's in the states or in Japan, is um, is essentially a closed fortress, and uh, independent experts have a very difficult time having their opinions aired. And also, what do you think will be the impact of this report here in the United States? Obviously, the Obama administration is on record as supporting an expansion of, of, uh, nu uh, of more nuclear plants here in the United States. And how do you think this will affect uh, th that direction that the Obama administration and many Republicans in Congress uh, uh, support? Well, I, I am concerned that the industry, the nuclear industry in the United States, will say it's a Japanese problem, um, and it's not. The, the uh, influence of corporate money has uh, has um, an insidious effect on, on Congress, and it's really not a Democrat or Republican issue. Um, there, there are no Democrats and Republicans when it comes to nuclear. They are all pro-nuclear. You know, we just saw that um, there were some hearings uh, about Chairman Yasko, who was the uh, NRC, uh, the head of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And the industry didn't like the fact that he was trying to regulate. So they actually had congressional hearings trying to put him on the carpet. And, and as a result, he resigned. So um, this kind of corporate pressure on Congress works its way down to the commissioners, there's five of them, and the commissioners affect the staff. So it's, um, it's just as insidious here as it is in Japan, and in fact, I think worldwide. Well, uh, Arnie Gunderson, we want to thank you, former nuclear executive and engineer. Thanks for joining us. 